So here I'm going to show some old video footage of engines running on hydrogen, Brown's gas to be specific. Hydrogen burns six times faster than gasoline, so if any vapor fuel would knock from too fast a burn speed, it would be hydrogen. What Joel Brown was trying to do originally with the gas is to run internal combustion engines on water. What we're going to do is we have our ER1150 water torch and we're going to put, it, put the torch into the Briggs & Stratton engine and run it just on the gas coming from the torch. So this engine will literally be running on water alone, no other fuel. The problem is that it'll be taking about two kilowatts of uh, power to make the gas in the ER1150, which is one of the most efficient Brown's gas electrolyzers in the world, even more efficient than Yule Brown's original machine. So um, yes, we can run engines on water, but it can't generate its own power to make its own gas while we're doing the engine running on water. Hubert Hummel will pull on the cord of the uh, Briggs & Stratton engine to show that there's no gasoline in the engine and that it won't start. And then Kyle Schweitzer will put in Brown's gas into the engine and uh, it will start it on Brown's gas. Here we have an internal combustion engine running on Brown's gas. Runs nice and smooth. And when we take the gas away, it stops. Now let's see hydrogen, as in Brown's gas, idling an internal combustion engine. You can see that it runs very smooth, no pre-ignition or detonation. My name is George Wiseman. This is Wednesday, November 13th, 1996, where you can hear the engine running in the background. This is a 1974 Vega with a 140 cubic inch engine. <clears throat> it's running on a number one torch tip from the uh, electrolyzer that you've seen so much of just recently. Uh, this more or less is an experimental car, get our things act together here so that we can run any vehicle on this Brown's gas. You can hear the engine's running nice and smooth. If it was running on the gasoline, you'd actually hear it was running considerably rougher. As you can see, the engine is still running on the Brown's gas. It's been running for 15 minutes now. It's, uh, you can see the torch is actually the way we're metering the gas into the carburetor using the valve on the torch. So what we're doing is just stuck a tube onto the end of the torch and then the tube goes down the barrel of the carburetor. No modifications on the engine whatsoever. This car has never even had a tune-up since the engine was, was rebuilt. Just tuned it by ear a little bit. You could hear it's just purring right along. So in this case, again, you see the torch hose is coming over from the electrolyzer. The valve is controlling the gas going into the carburetor, just with a hose stuck right into the carburetor. We actually started this engine on the gas. The gasoline uh, for the car has been turned off for a half an hour. It's, it's just never been turned on again since we started running the vehicle on Brown's gas. Now, if we go over here to the exhaust at the back of the car, you'll see that the stuff coming out is simply water vapor. It's an, and if you, uh, we're just getting water out the exhaust. There's actually water droplets in my hand here. Water. So, water. It's just water vapor coming out the exhaust. So let's look at an engine running on gasoline vapors. Gasoline burns considerably slower than hydrogen, so this should be interesting. There's, there's a fairly good idol. Now what I'm going to show, we're not going to worry about the Heiko for a second. I'm going to show you how that the vehicle can actually idle on the vapors from the float bowl. Now if you look here, you can see bubbles coming out of both the secondary and the primary uh, um, jets in the bottom of the float bowl. So there's no fuel going into the engine from the float bowl because we've got air coming from the Venturi back up into the float bowl. I'm shutting off the vapors from the Heiko. Here the engine RPM actually pick up. That's yes, right. Now we're running on the, on the vapors from the, float, from the float bowl alone. There's no fuel going in from the carburetor and there's no fuel going in from the Heiko. In other words, if you squeeze this, the engine quits. Yep. 
<laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, in order to idle the engine on the vapors from the uh, carburetor enhancer, I actually have to have a 3 8 inch air bleed going into the intake manifold to provide enough air to lean the mixture out. These vapors are that rich. So this quarter inch line, for a quarter inch line, I have to have a 3 8 inch line of air. Okay? Now let's switch back over to the Heiko. Here it is. Okay. Uh, Peter pointed out that we he wants to be able to demonstrate that the vehicle is not running on the regular carburetor, that it's for sure running on the Heiko. So what we're going to do is disconnect the fuel line to the regular carburetor, empty the fuel bowl, mm -hmm. and then show that it's still running on the Heiko vapors alone, which you can't see any vapors coming through this fuel filter. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll proceed to do that. Okay. Impromptu. Gas plug here. Oh, you're gonna do that? I was gonna. Okay. Oh, what were you gonna do? We, I was gonna take it off here. Oh, I see. Okay. That ought to work. That'll work. Okay. Um. Turn around like so. Now we'll start the engine and empty the float bowl. Now the flow bowl is empty and we're running on the Heiko. No fuel whatsoever going to that bowl. No. We can it. You can see that the fuel is still flowing through the system because it's coming from the fuel pump. You can see that there's no vapors or no fuel, liquid fuel, going through this filter. That's the, vap that's the vapors going through the engine. But if I was to squeeze this hose, shut off the vapor flow to the engine, and we will just take one little quick look back here and show that there's no liquid fuel in the, in the carburetor. Uh -huh. We could actually, and we have, removed the whole carburetor except for the base plate so that the throttle plates are still shut and done this experiment. There's no fuel going in from the regular carburetor. We go back over here, and we shut off the vapors going to the engine, and the engine dies. The engine was running on vapors alone. Now the engine is started and is still running on vapors alone.